start solving equations that have log and exponential functions in them. But before we do that, there's a formula that we need to talk about. Um, and we mentioned on the other day how you can look on your calculators and evaluate logarithms with different bases. Mm -hmm. If you do not have an 84 with the updated operating system, for example, if you have an 83, the only way you're going to be able to evaluate logarithms that have a base other than 10 or E is to use what's, use what's called change of base formula. Um, even though if you do have an 84, you still have to know change of base formula in order to solve equi um, uh, log equations. Some log equations will have two different log functions with different bases. So in order to solve the equations, the first thing you have to do is rewrite the expression so that you have all the same base in the equation, which we'll take a look at next class. Um, again, if you own an 83 and it's not a, not a plus or it's not an 84, you can only evaluate in base 10 or base E. So if you have an 83 without the updated operating system, you can only evaluate a base of 10 or base of E. Like I said, all your 83s or 84s have the log button with base 10 right here or the natural log button, which is your base E. So all the calculators have that. Um, if so, then the other bases need to be changed using the change of base formula. Remember, the log key finds base 10. The natural log key finds a base E. So the way change of base formula works, suppose I have a logarithm with some base, and I want to change it into some other base, and we'll call that base C. What you can do is you can type in log base C of M, so whatever this number is right here, divided by log base C of the original base of the logarithm. I just remember base goes on the bottom. So when I'm using my change of base formula, the base is always going to go on the bottom. And this is the new base that we want to change it into. So if you have a TI-83, you'll be changing things into base 10 or base E since that's the basis that you have on your calculator. So for example, let's try and evaluate log base 6 of 15 using the common and the natural logarithm. So then log base 6 of 15 is going to be equal to, if I want to change this into my common logarithm, which is a base 10, I'll take log of 15 and divide it by log of my original base, which is 6. So what this does is it changes it into a base 10. So I'm changing this into a base 10. So then on my calculator, what I can do is I can just simply type in log of 15. Make sure you close that parentheses there. Divide it by log of 6. And I get 1.511. And like I said, even if you do have the 84s, you have to know this formula when we get into solving logarithm equations that have different bases in it. Because we will have to be rewriting expressions so that we have a common base in the equation before we can start solving it. All right, you can also use, like I said, the natural log. So again, log base 6 of 15 will be equal to the natural log of 15 divided by the natural log of the base, which is 6. So it doesn't matter which base I use, whether I use base 10, or in this particular case, I'm changing it into a base E. So again, I can type in natural log of 15 divided by the natural log of 6. And notice I get the same value. I get the 1.511 regardless of what base I use. All right, any questions on using that change of base formula? You guys go ahead and do B for me. And again, it doesn't matter. You go ahead and change it into a base 10 or a base um, E. So if I change this into natural log, natural log of 7 divided by the natural log of 18. Again, you could also use base 10. You should end up with, um, let's see, divided by natural log of 18. You should end up with 0.673. Again, always round to three decimal places. So any questions on using the change of base formula? All right. Um, 
So just before we get into solving equations, let's jump down to the bottom two. Um, if you have an equation, we know for an equation to be true, the left-hand side has to be equal to the right-hand side. So if I have an equation where u is equal to v, you've been solving equations. We know we can add, subtract, multiply, divide to both sides of an equation. You can take the log of both sides of an equation. So if u is equal to v, then I know that the log of u has to be equal to the log of v. All right, so you can take the log of both, num of both sides of an equation. This is actually a repeat here. And again, you can do natural log as well. Doesn't matter, you can take the log of any base of both sides of an equation. So just like you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, you can take the log of both sides of an equation. You can also, if you have an equation where u is equal to v, you can raise both sides of an equation to become an exponent. So for example, I can take this equation and say I can take e to the u and raise it to the base of e. So I can take an equation, and this is called exponentiating. I can exponentiate an equation where I take my whole entire equation and I raise it to the same base on both sides of the equal sign. So again, just like you can add, subtract, multiply, divide to both sides of an equation, you can take the log of any base of both sides of the equation, or you can do what's called exponentiate, take the entire equation and raise it to an exponent. All right? So because exponential functions are one-to-one -one functions, if b to the u is equal to b to the v, again, as long as these bases are the same, then to solve an exponential equation, I can take my exponents and set them equal to one another. So if my bases are the same, I can set the two exponents equal to one another. If I have a log of a base equal to the log of the same base, then I can take what's inside my logs and set them equal to one another. So if I have a log equal to another log, I can take what's inside my log and set them equal to one another. So the way we approach solving log and exponential equations, if you have an exponential function, if it's an exponential equation, which we know because the variable is an exponent, change one or both sides to the same base. And you had some practice doing that last night for homework. If you can, see if you can change it so that everything has the same base. So for example, if one side has a 2 to the x, the other side of the equation has a 4 to the x, I know I can change that 4 into a 2 squared. So for example, if I have a 2 to the x equal to a 4, I know I can change that 4 into a 2 squared. So that's what I mean by seeing if you can change it to the same base. If you have an exponential equation, this technique work, doesn't work. You can't change both sides of the equation to a common base. You take the log or the natural log of both sides of the equation. So you have no choice. If you can't change it to the same base, you have no choice to take the log or natural log of both sides of the equation. If you have a log equation, that's pretty obvious when you have a log equation, and there's a log only on one side, rewrite it as an exponential function. You had practice doing that last night for homework. Take your log and change it into exponential form. If the log has a log on both sides, then you're going to exponentiate both sides to solve. The big thing you have to remember when you're solving log equations, and you guys dealt with this um, last year in Algebra 2 quite a bit, those extraneous solutions. Remember, we can never take the log of a negative number. This does not exist. It is possible that when you're solving log equations, that you end up, when you take the numbers you get, you do everything correctly, but you take your answers and you plug them back in, you end up with a negative number inside the log. Those are your extraneous solutions that you have to reject. It's only the log equations that you have to be careful about this because you cannot take the log of a negative number. So let's take a look at an example 1a. 
What kind of equation is this? Exponential or log? Do you see the word log written in it? No. So it's going to be a what? Exponential. So the first strategy you want to do, if possible, change it so that you have the same base. So my smaller base is a 2. So always try, if possible, change it into the smaller base. Is it possible to take 8 and rewrite it as a base of 2? Yes, because what is 8 equivalent to? 8 is equivalent to 2 to the what power? 3. So I can rewrite 8 as 2 to the third. Raised to the x is equal to 2 to the x plus 1. Now remember, you now have a power raised to a power. What do you do when you have a power raised to a power? You're going to do what? Multiply them. So 2 to the 3x is equal to 2 to the x plus 1. So any questions on how I rewrote that equation with the common base of 2? Now that my bases are the same, I can equate those exponents. So I can take 3x and set it equal to x plus 1. And now I'm just going to solve for x. So I can subtract x on both sides. That gives me 2x is equal to 1. Divide by 2, x is equal to a half. Again, because the domain of exponential functions is all real numbers, you don't have to worry about checking for those extraneous solutions. All right, any questions on 1a? Take a look at 1b. I have 9 raised to the x squared equals 3 raised to the negative 5x minus 2. My smaller base is 3. So what I want to do is I want to see if I can change 9 into a base of 3. Can I rewrite 9 with a base of 3? Because 3 to what power is equal to 9? 3 to the what power? 2. So 3 to the second power is all raised to x squared is equal to 3 to the negative 5x minus 2. Now you have a power raised to a power. What's your rules for exponents when you have a power raised to a power? Multiply them. So I have 3 to the 2x squared is equal to 3 to the negative 5x minus 2. So now that my bases are the same, I can equate those exponents. So 2x squared is equal to negative 5x minus 2. Oh, good grief. What kind of equation do I have here? It's a quadratic, isn't it? How do you solve quadratic equations? Hopefully we're going to be able to factor it. So what do I need to have on one side of the equation to factor this? Zero. So I'll add my 5x, add my 2. So you guys go ahead and factor that for me. X plus 1. Any questions on the factoring? So then what are my solutions going to be? X is equal to what? X is equal to negative 2 and negative 1 half. Okay? So any questions, guys, on solving an exponential equation when you have to rewrite with the same base? Sometimes you may have to take an equation and rewrite both sides to the same base. So for example, I have 16 to the 3x is equal to x plus 1. Again, I know I cannot take, I know 16 squared is not going to be equal to 64. It's going to be much, much larger. But what common base does 16 and 64 share? Well, what's 4 squared? 4 squared is 16. And what's 4 to the third? 64. So this is a case I'm going to have to rewrite both bases. So I'll have 4 squared raised to the 3x is equal to 4 to the third raised to the x plus 1. Again, I know when I have a power to a power, I'm going to multiply. So on the left-hand side, I'll have 4 raised to the 6x. Now be careful, guys. There's actually parentheses around that x plus 1. So when I have a power to a power, when I take 3 and multiply it by x plus 1, what am I going to have to do with that 3? I'm going to have to distribute. So that's going to give me 4 raised to the 3x plus 3. So any questions on how I rewrote both sides of the equation with a base of 4? Now that my bases are the same, I can set my exponents equal to one another. 
So I can subtract my 3x, so 3x is equal to 3. So what's x going to be equal to? x will be equal to 1. So any questions, guys, on solving exponential equations when the bases are the same, when you can rewrite to the same base? All right, let's take a look at a set of log equations. You actually kind of did some of these last night for homework. Notice I only have a log on one side of the equation right here. So again, if you have log just on one side, just switch it into exponential form. So as long as you have log equal to a number, flip it into exponential form. What's the base of this logarithm? The base of this logarithm is the base of what? 10. So I can take 10. Looking at this log equation, what's the exponent for 10? The exponent for 10 is a what? Is it the 1 or x plus 1? Where's my exponent in this equation? Base of 10, just like what you did last night for homework. Where's the exponent? Is it the 1 or the x plus 1? It's the 1, remember? There is your exponent. So 10 to the first is equal to x plus 1. So then when I solve for x, what's x going to be equal to? x is equal to 9. Remember, you always, always have to check to see if it's extraneous. Anytime it's a log equation, you've got to check for those extraneous solutions. Make sure you take 9, plug it back into the original, and see if it gives me a negative number. If you get a negative number inside the log, you have to reject it. Well, I know that 9 plus 1 is 10, so I know that this answer is not extraneous. I know that this is good. But like I said, anytime it's a log equation, you've got to check to see if those solutions are extraneous. So let's look at B. What's the base of this logarithm? The base of this logarithm is what? What's the base of this logarithm? 10. So again, I have a single log on one side of the equation equal to just a number. So I can change it into exponential form. So 10, what's my exponent for 10 going to be? It's going to be 10 to the what? Fourth is equal to x minus 2. Well, 10 to the fourth is going to be at a 1 with four zeros. So 10,000 equals x minus 2. So x is going to be equal to what? x will be equal to 10,000 and 2. Again, plug it in. Make sure you're not getting the log of a negative number. And we're not, so we know that this answer is good. All right, any questions on B? You guys go ahead and try C for me. So what's x going to be equal to? x will be equal to 35. And again, always plug it back into the original. Make sure if you cannot, if it does not give you that log of a negative number. All right, any questions on C? Now let's take a look at D. D is different than the first three because notice I've got, a, I do not have a single log on the left-hand side. So what you may have to do is use what you did last night for homework, condense using your properties. If you do not have a single log on one side of the equation, use those properties of logarithms to smush it together. How can I bring two logs together when they're separated by subtraction? How can I condense this together? I condense it through what operation? What did you do last night for homework? You can condense it through what operation? When you're separated by subtraction sign, you can bring them together through what? Division. Division. So I can rewrite this as the natural log of x squared over 3 is equal to 2. So now notice you do have a single log equal to a number. So now after you condense it to a single log, you can now change it into exponential form. What's the base of this logarithm? This base is a what? E. So E, and what's the exponent for E going to be? It's going to be E to the second is equal to X squared over 3. Leave it in terms of E. E is an exact number. The minute you pick up your calculators, 
and you change E into decimals, it's an approximate. Leave it in exact form. The question is, how do I start getting X by itself? What's going to be my first step to get X by itself? Multiply both sides by what? 3. So I have 3E squared is equal to X squared. Then what? How do I get rid of the square? I'm going to do what? Square root it. And don't forget, when you do square root, what do you guys have to remember to put in front of the radical? Plus or minus. Do you see a perfect square sitting underneath this radical? Can you simplify this? Yes, because what is the square root of e squared? The square root of e squared is just what? E. So if this is a multiple choice question. You're not going to see this as an answer choice. You'll see e times the square root of 3. <coughs> Any questions on that? What do I have to do with both these answers? What do I have to do with both these answers? Plug them back into the, my original. Well, I know my positive is good. What about negative e square root 3? But because I'm squaring it, what happens? That becomes a what? Positive. So both are good. All right? So any questions where you may have to condense before you change it into exponential form? All right? So take a look at e. How do you bring this together? You're going to bring this together through what? How can, again, you do not have a single log. You have two logs separated by a subtraction sign. How do you bring them together? You're going to bring them together through what? Division. So log base 2 of 3x plus 2 over x is equal to 3. Now that you've got a single logarithm, now you can change it into exponential form. The base of my logarithm is 2. What's the exponent for 2 going to be? 3 equals 3x plus 2 over x. So I know that 2 to the third is 8. So 8 equals 3x plus 2 all over x. How do I solve this? What's going to be my first step to solve this equation? Any thoughts? How do I get rid of the fraction? I can multiply both sides by what? X. So I have 8x is equal to 3x plus 2. So then I can subtract 3x. So 5x is equal to 2. x is equal to 2 fifths. What do I have to do with this? I have to check to make sure it doesn't give me a, ne a negative. Again, you've got to check both logs. Make sure you do not get a negative inside either log. If either one of these is negative, you've got to reject the, the solution for the entire equation. All right, so any questions where I got two-fifths from? Look at F. Before I smush this together, what do we have to do with this 2 that's in the front? I have to take this 2 and move it to become the exponent for x. So before you bring it together through the division, make sure you move the coefficients back to the powers. So I have the natural log of x squared minus the natural log of 4 is equal to 3. Now I can condense this through addition. So any questions on using the properties of logarithms on the left-hand side? What's the base of this logarithm? This is a base of what? This is a base of? What's the base of this log? E. So e to the third is equal to x squared over 4. Remember, e is a number. So we're not solving for e, we're solving for x. What's going to be the first step to solve for x? I'm going to have to do what to both sides? Times 4. So 4e to the third is equal to x squared. Then what can I do to both sides? I can take the what? Square root. So then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4e to the third. And remember, I know the square root of 4 is 2, 
So this is actually plus or minus 2 times the square root of e to the third. Now, the one thing you need to be careful of, guys, when you are checking for extraneous, you always want to check it back into my original equation. What I know the positive is good, but what happens if I plug negative 2 times square root of e to the third in? The negative is going to give me a negative number inside the log. So I have to reject the negative. So my only answer is going to be the positive. Make sure you're always plugging it back into the original when you're checking for extraneous solutions. You guys go ahead and try G for me on your own. Yes, Bavar. Oh, you're right. You could simplify it more. Yes, thank you. It could be 2E times square root of E. Yes, because you have E squared times E there. Yep. You guys go ahead and try G for me on your own. So going back, again, use your power property. Take that 2 and move it to the exponent. Once you have a log equal to a log, remember you can just simply take what's inside the logs and set them equal to one another. So I have x squared is equal to 9. Now, again, when you do square to 9, that's going to be plus or minus 3. But again, if you take the negative and plug it back into the original, you have to reject it. So you only have the one solution of 3. Any questions on G? So now look at H. I have two logs on the left. How can I condense these two logs that are separated by addition side? I can bring them together through what operation? Multiplication. So I can rewrite this as log of 3x plus 7 times x minus 2 is equal to 1. So now you have log equal to a number. Again, what's the base of this logarithm? This is a base of what? 10. So I can write this as 10 to the first is equal to 3x plus 7 times x minus 2. What am I going to have to do in order to solve for x? Remember, this is not a 0 on the left. I can't just set 3x plus 7 equal to 0 and x minus 2 equal to 0. This is a 10. So before I do anything, I am going to have to FOIL. I do have to multiply out those two bio binomials. So 3x times x is a 3x squared. Plus 7x minus 6x is plus x. Minus 14 is equal to 10. What's next? What do I need to get on one side in order to solve by factoring? I need to get a what? Zero, so I'm going to have to subtract 10 on both sides. So zero is equal to 3x squared plus x. Negative 14 minus 10 is a minus 24. So any questions on how I got it down to this point? Now what are you guys going to do? What are you going to do on the right-hand side? We're going to have to do what? Factor it. So you guys go ahead and factor that for me. So hopefully we got it factored down into x plus 3 times 3x minus 8. Any questions on how I did that factorization? So one of my solutions going to be x is going to be equal to what? Negative 3 and 8 thirds. But what do I have to do with these answers? I have to do what? Plug them back in. Make sure I check them. What happens if I plug negative 3 back into the either one of those log expressions? I end up with a log of what kind of number? Negative. So that's an extraneous solution, so I have to reject it. If I plug in 8 thirds, I know 3 times 8 thirds plus 7 is positive. 8 thirds I know is bigger than 2, so I know 8 thirds is positive. So I only have one solution of 8 thirds. So again, anytime you're solving those log equations, make sure you're checking for those extraneous solutions. All right? Any questions on that? Now let's take a look at i. I have a single log on the left, but notice I have two logs separated by addition sign on the right. So anytime you see more than one log on one side of the equation, you want to smush them together using those properties. 
How can I bring together the natural log of 11 plus natural log of 2? I can get ends through what operation? Multiplication. So I can rewrite the right-hand side as the natural log of 11 times 2. And what is 11 times 2? 22. So the natural log of 22 is equal to the natural log of 3x minus 5. So again, when you have a log equal to another log, in order for this equation to be true, what's inside your two logarithms have to be equal. They have to be the same number. Natural log of 22 is only going to be equal to the natural log of 22. So all you're going to do is set what's inside your logs equal to one another. So 3x minus 5 is equal to 22. So I can add 5 to both sides, so 3x is equal to 27. So x is going to be equal to 9. So any questions on i? You guys go ahead and try j for me on your own. Um, a negative inside of the log, so we have to reject the negative 20. All right? Again, when we condense this through multiplication, um, remember this is a base 10, so it's going to give me 10 squared is equal to x times x plus 15. And then you have to distribute the x. All right, so any questions, guys, on solving J? So any questions on solving? Yes, Barbara? Where did you get the 100? I subtract, because again, to factor this, I know 10 squared is 100. So in order to do my factoring, I have to subtract 100 on both sides. But the base of this logarithm, when I condense, is a 10. So when I have a log equal to just a number, I'm going to change it into exponential form. So the base of this logarithm is a 10, because there's no base written here. Remember, this is a 2. That's the exponent for the base. So 10 squared is equal to what was inside that log. Any other questions on that? All right, and we're going to stop here for today. So um, you guys can take the rest of the time to work on the quiz review, or you have a 10.4 worksheet done as well. So the rest of the time, if you have any questions on the quiz review, feel free to ask me. Um, yes, because we're also going to continue. So you're only going to do 10.4 number one. Yeah, because we're spending two days on 10.4. So guys, the question was, there's two 10.4 worksheets in your homework packet. You're only doing 10.4 worksheet number one because we're spending two days on solving equations. So the 10.4 worksheet number two will be Tuesday night somewhere. You good? Okay. Eric here? No?